was he was excited and he had some self-esteem because he was thinking of that soft side of that part of him where he had actually helped out people. And the more he talked about that, the better, better he felt. He felt yeah. more and more and more. And he started feeling better and better. And then he was starting to joke and laugh. And it was kind of like, you know, thank, thank you, Holy Spirit. I was just seeing how powerful the Holy Spirit is. He can take a, seemingly a suicidal deep despair and just turn it, turn the tables on the ego just through being lined up. So we drove all the way through Tennessee, and he was laughing, and we were telling jokes and everything. We got up to Tennessee, and I said, "Now we're going to have to. We're getting off in, in Kentucky, and um, we're going to go visit a friend in Kentucky. So we're going to be getting off the highway." And he said, uh, and "I said, you know, I have a I have a trailer in Kentucky, not too far up there." And I said, "If you don't have any place to stay, you're welcome to go to the trailer. It's got food in it, and it's got, you know." A, a fireplace and this and that. And he said, will you guys be there? And we said, well, we're actually, we're going off, we're going to visit another friend and everything. And he said, well, if you're not going to be there, he said, I, I don't think I'd like to be there by myself. He said, okay. So then he said, um, he, we, we were getting ready to stop and, and get off. And um, I said to him, uh, here, I'll give you my phone number. And it's in Cincinnati. And then whenever you pass through, you can you can give me a call. And he kind of looked me in the eye and he said, you don't want to give me your number. And I said, yes, I want to give you my number. And he said, because if you give it to me, I'll call. <laughs> and I said, I know. I said, that's why I'm giving it to you. So if you pass through, you can call. We can get together and everything like this. And, and he was, I mean, that was another thing hard for him to conceive. Like, why would you give a stranger your phone number? You know, I, I'm not family to you. I'm not anything not for him. Family, it's yeah. like we said, we both said, you are family. We are family. And, and he, you know, really felt that. And, and then... And at one point he had looked at me and he said, why, why are you guys being so nice to me? Kind of like, what's the hook? You know, what, what's going on here? And I said, well, I said, you know, if, you're, if your brother needed... You know, need it for you to help him out a bit. I mean, wouldn't you do that for your brother? And he said, "Well, yeah." And I said, "Well, I mean, that that's what it. You know, that's all it is. You know." Um, and for me, it's like the the real power of the experience was that actually it was like there was no difference at all. It's like I wasn't giving to somebody else in any way. It's like there, he was me and I was, I was him. I mean, that was my sense of it. And that was the, the feeling or the experience of it, was that there was no difference whatsoever. There not, was no other. And that's the miracle. Oh, I give to myself. If you, yeah. And it happened over and over. I mean, I picked up numbers of hitchhikers and had just wonderful experiences. And with people we've met along the way, it, as, it, as you keep doing it and you practice this, it, as a way of just asking the Holy Spirit, it really becomes apparent that it is not better to give than to receive, or whatever. It's that giving and receiving are the same. That as you treat your brother, you are treating yourself. And that every time you get angry at any brother, or upset or whatever, that's, that's your gift, so to speak. That's the ego's gift to yourself. You're giving yourself that. So what happened was, at the end of that was, I, I made a little care package. You know, I... I, all my clothes have been taken in Florida, and as quickly as they were taken, I received so many donations of, of clothes, sweaters and clothes at an AA center. They were all laughing and saying, you guys, can you qualify? <laughs> there you take them. And so I had these sweaters and everything, and I said, here, take, take my sweater, and you can put it under your jacket. And he said, oh, I could take your clothes. And I said, they aren't mine. <laughs> I said, somebody gave them to me just like I'm giving them to you. And he said, well, okay. You know, it was like... The Spirit was guiding everything that would come out of my mouth when he would say something else. It was always what he could hear, mm -hmm. what he could take, and uh, gave him some different things, some clothes and some food. We gave him peanut butter, I think, and jelly sandwiches, and I put some money in there. And he said, you know what? He said, I got my spirit back. He said, I'm going to turn 
ride around and get off the highway with you guys and walk across to the other end of the highway, <laughs> and I'm going to hitchhike all the way back down through the states that we had just come up and all the way down to Florida. And he said, I know a Christian family that I once met in Florida that I'm going to go into them and see if I can do some work for them and everything. And then as we pulled off, he kind of looked back like this, kind of a sheepish kind of look, and he just kind of went like this. You know, and it was a real, it's that feeling you have in your heart where you feel like it's such a gratefulness to the Holy Spirit, like, wow, mm -hmm. you can handle anything. Even the same extreme cases, you know, you can handle it. To me, that's, that's what all this is about. You know, this is just kind of setting it up for, I don't know what's best in any situation, and I don't know how to be most helpful, but there is one with me that does know, and if I'll listen, Seek first the power of God. Yeah.